I'm back. Apparently, we left some questions unanswered after yesterday's video. So I'm going to take a little bit of time today to answer those. And I'm going to dedicate this video to my mom. The first question is, how do I know it's a mountain lion? What are the chances that I just saw a mountain lion? Well, the chances are really not that good. First of all, again, our mountain lions here in Los Angeles are very, very nocturnal. They get up super late and they go back to bed super early. So the chances that you're gonna see them during the time that you're awake are kind of slim. Also, more than 90% of all mountain lion sightings are actually not mountain lions. Sometimes, they're dogs. Mostly, they're bobcats though. One way to be able to tell the difference between a bobcat and a mountain lion is by the length of the tail. The bobcat has a little tiny tail that's always twitching. The mountain lion has a long tail. Also, the bobcat is much smaller than the mountain lion. He's about a third of the size, so that should be able to help you as well. But from a distance, it's kind of hard to tell. And again, a viewing is not necessarily an emergency. What if I actually see a mountain lion in my backyard? Again, it depends on your situation. Are you surrounded by small children playing outside in their yard? If that's the case, yes, you should probably call the Department of Fish and Wildlife. If nobody's around because it's quiet and kids are in school or whatever, it's, it's, you just see him out there, he's just out there, that's not necessarily an emergency. We have wildlife in our backyards all the time that we don't necessarily see. If he's doing something that you think is an emergency, well, then you have to decide whether it's an emergency or not. Um, but always err on the side of caution. One of the questions that came up was, should I humanely haze him out of my yard? Should I get pots and pans and go running out there? And, get out of here, get out of here. No, don't ever engage with a mountain lion if you don't have to. I don't recommend any hazing device that requires one-on-one -on -one with a mountain lion. Now, if you're hiking or you're out somewhere and you happen to be one-on-one -on -one with a mountain lion for some crazy reason, then yes, you make all the noise you can. You be as unexpected as you can. You take up as much space as you can. You even take your pen you can, you shake it at him, you tell him get away. That might help you. But in general, if you have the option about whether or not to engage with a mountain lion, I would say don't do it. There are other ways. There's another humane hazing technique. Let's say you know that you live in mountain lion country and that worries you because you have animals or kids in your yard or whatever. Uh, one of the tools that I like to use is called the critter getter. This one emits a noise and a light when motion goes across it. So you set it up outside somewhere on the perimeter and then when somebody's trying to come in, there's a good chance this might help scare them away. Um, it would scare me away, I can tell you that much. Okay, enough of that. Anyway, that is a humane hazing device that works because you don't have to engage with the animal in order for it to do its job. And for a mountain lion, that is exactly the sort of humane hazing device that I would recommend. Somebody asked about horses and how safe they are. Again, in general, I would say you don't have that much to worry about, but there is always the chance that it will happen. Uh, in general, I would say put your horses in the barn at night uh, try to keep your barn secure. That's what I would recommend. Um, in, I've seen many, many videos where helicopters are tracking bears and mountain lions through neighborhoods and they'll walk right by horses. However, if the horse was running, I'm not sure what would happen. So you want to definitely be careful with all of your outside animals when you live in an area where mountain lions also live. Um, you can also use the dogs. There are a number of livestock guarding dogs. Depending on how large your property is and what your situation is, it might be one of the answers for you. 
you might want to research that. And then again, I can't emphasize enough the importance of a predator-proof pen. It works for chickens, it works for dogs, it works for goats. Chain link on all four sides. Chain link on the top. Some sort of shade or rain cover. Cement footing. This is what will keep your animals safe from all nighttime and daytime predators. Um, in my last video, I said that mountain lions have a huge effect on the territory that they inhabit, but I didn't really get into the specifics of that. So I'd just like to spend a few minutes talking about how the mountain lion impacts his habitat. The first thing is he eats deer. So he keeps that population under control. He also keeps it healthy because he takes the old and the weak instead of the strong. And it's good that he controls that deer population because if they overpopulate, they will eat more and more of our flowering plants. And when that happens, we lose pollinators because pollinators depend on the flowering plants to survive. That's birds, bees, butterflies, that sort of thing. So even someone as big as a mountain lion has a huge effect on something as small as a butterfly. That makes him very valuable. The other thing he does is after he makes his kill and after he has his dinner and he's had what he's wanted to have, he leaves it there. The birds of prey can come and finish it off. Coyotes, foxes, bobcats, everybody come and ha comes and has some bit of that. And so it benefits everyone. One of their, but our mountain lions are facing a number of challenges and they're caused, they're all caused by the same reason. Number one reason for mountain lion deaths is mountain lion to mountain lion encounter. Our mountain lion habitat here in Southern California is fragmented by the freeways. They can't get out. When they reach sexual maturity, they need to get out. They need to get out, find their own territory, and find a mate. But when they're stuck by the freeway, they can't get out. And now they're stuck in this territory where there already is adult mountain lion. That's a problem. So the number one reason they die is one-on-one -on -one encounters with each other. Another big problem is getting smashed on the freeway. They try to get across, they give it their best. It's really hard to get across eight to 10 lanes of freeway, even if it is in the middle of the night. And then another big challenge they're having is inbreeding, again, as a result of this fragmented habitat. The answer is overpasses, underpasses, and continuous wildlife corridors. Right now, the National Wildlife Federation is working really hard to build an overpass in Agora at Liberty Canyon. And this is going to be very helpful to us because the nearest gene pool for us, for our local native mountain lions, is the Los Padres National Forest. And if we get this overpass in Agora, that will open up our area to that genetic diversity. Our mountain lions will be able to get up there and maybe a mountain lion or two will come down here. But that's really important because inbreeding will eventually lead to the end of the species and we can't have that. So one way you can help is you can text lion to 25383. That will send a $10 donation to the National Wildlife Federation, specifically for the Liberty Canyon overpass. And I'm really having fun making these videos. So, if you have a question that you would like to see answered, I am super happy to answer it. You can send me an email at info at terrangaranch.org and we'll make a video just for you. Thank you so much. I hope you're having a great day. Bye-bye.